Uh, hello, so today uh, continuing on this contest, Buclid Contest 171, the last problem which is <coughs> uh, problem 1320, minimum distance to type a word using two fingers. So the problem says we have, a, we have this keyboard right here with the um, uppercase letters that are organized in this way. And then that's, so we have a keyboard layout as shown in this XY plane. And each English letter, uppercase English letter, is at some specific coordinate. So, for example, here, if you look at A, it's in the first row, um, first column. So that's zero base indexing. That's zero, zero. B here is at the uh, position one. So it's first zero, zeroth row and uh, one column. So it's zero, one. And P here is row at index two and column at index three. So it's two, three. And those are the coordinates. Z here is four and one. And we get a word. And that for that word, we're going to return the minimum total distance to type that string using two fingers. So we'll place two fingers in two posi in positions, different positions. And then the distance is basically between two coordinates. It's just the normal calculation of distance. So it's the difference, the absolute difference between the x coordinates plus the absolute difference between the y coordinates. And the initial positions for the two fingers are considered free, which means, for example, if we place four with the word cake, um, our first finger on position C, um, we will get um, the cost is zero, and then the second finger also at position K, the cost is zero. But then moving to A, to the second position, that's where the cost is the difference from C to A, the distance from C to A, and for the second finger going from K to E, the difference is um, the distance between K and A, E. And so, um, and then, so those are considered free, and then two fingers do not have to start at the first letter or the first two letters. So we don't have, like you see here for K, the second finger starts at K. So it doesn't necessarily have to start at the first letter um, or the second letter th for that matter. And then we have a couple of other examples. And if you could s the constraint here, the word length is between two and 300. Um, and then they are all uppercase letters. <coughs> so you could see here from looking at the problem, um, there is no way for us to know in advance. Um, like there is no heuristics we can take to find the optimal solution. So let's just try them all and let's take the, the best solution. And also one thing here is it says the minimum total distance. So we should right away think about using um, some kind of dynamic programming solution. Um, okay, so now let's um, uh, let's look at the um, do an overview of the of how we can solve. Um, okay, so now let's see how we can solve this problem. So first, let's just go over the first example that we have. So we get a word um, cake, right? So that's the first thing. Um, and this is one that we want to place our fingers in. And the optimal solution, according to the example, is to place finger 1 at C and then move it to... So the initial initial position's cost is 0. That's, uh, the problem statement says that. So we so far we have 0. And then move it to position um, A, of, to letter A in the, in the keyboard. And the cost of that is the distance between um, C and A, which is equal to 2. And then the other finger, we place it at 2. Finger 2, we place it at uh, K. So we can notice here, we don't have to initially start putting two fingers in the first positions. So we don't have to put uh, finger 1 at C and the other one at finger 2 at a, so it doesn't have to start from the two first letter. It can start from any letter in the word, right? So that's why we will need to try all of them. And so finger two at K, so again, initial position of each finger is zero. And then we move it to, we move it to uh, E, right? And then, so the cost would be the distance between um, um, K and E, right? And that is 1, and so the overall cost is just 0 plus 0 plus 2 plus 1, right? And so that would give us 3, right? So you kind of, when you look at this, um, and we know that we are looking for the minimum um, 
distance um, to type the entire word using the two fingers. So the first thing we need to find is what is the state here that we are dealing with, right? So what is our state? So the state is here, it's, um, we, we, use, we need the two fingers, we need to know where the two fingers are placed, so placement, current placement of of the first finger, right? And so this is, initially it's none, right? It's placed nowhere, right? And then we would have to try placing it at different letters of the word and see which one gives us the, the better solution, right? Uh, initially at none. So we know how to initialize it. And then the second one is the same thing, current placement of, except it's of finger two. And same thing, it's initially at, it's initially none, right? It's initially nowhere. It's just like you can think of it as hovering on the top of the keyboard. And the other thing we need to know is which which position of the word we are at. Like first we try to place C, and then we try to place for A, and so we need some index for the current position that we want to move to in the word. So I position um, in the in word. So we know now that our DP, since what I'm doing, what I'm going to write this solution in terms of is um, it's basically um, top down dynamic programming using dynamic programming. So first we have to find kind of the um, dynamic programming. We have to find the relations. So we have to find a couple of things for this to, for us to formulate the problem in terms of this. The first thing is we need to find what is our base case, right? And then we need to find what are the choices at each point, right? So what choices can we make at each point, right? Or at each moment. Um, and then we, we need to take, and then take the min, right? Take the min of the two choices because we are looking for the minimum distance. And then the last thing we can do is just like the initial call, right? Just the initial call that we need to. And so let's figure out this. So what is the base case? So we know that once we, once we um, finish the word, we are done, right? So we can return the current distance is zero and it can just propagate and adds to the rest. So when we are done with the word, so if i is equal to the length of the word, we can just return zero. There is nothing to do anymore, right? Now, what are the choices at each point? So here we have just two fingers, right? For, and we need to find a placement for this letter. So we can either place finger one at it. Uh, so basically, let's say we have cake here. So when we are at this position, we need, we need to try both. Try placing finger one and try placing finger two and see which one is better, right? And same thing here, when we are here, same thing. Well, try, try moving finger one to it and then try moving finger two to it. Try both and see which one is better. That's all that we are going to do here. <coughs> so that would mean here that the two um, the two things that we will have is well um, choice one would be move finger one toward I right, and choice two would be move finger two toward i right now what we, we will since we are looking for the minimum distance we will need to add that so that would mean that let's just define this helper function that has this state so what is the state position of finger one initial uh, at, at that moment and then position of finger two and i um the position in the word that's the state that i said here so how can I term, can I write this in terms of the two choices, right? So when I'm calling this, this would be the choice one would be a helper, right? At position, I'm going to try to move finger one toward I. So finger one now would be at character I in position in uh, in the word, and then finger two will stay where it is, and then I will move to the next character in word. So I plus one. But what is the cost of doing this? So I'm moving um, <coughs> finger one toward I. And so the, according to the problem, 
as we said, see here in the example, is the distance between where the finger one was to the, to the character at position i. So this will need to be plus distance um, from finger one, right, to the character at position i. So I will need to find a function that to um, I will need to uh, implement this function distance. Now my choice two would be moving finger two instead. So that would be a helper. So yeah, one thing I would like to do is place the distance first. So let's say it would be distance from f1 to world at position i, and then a helper would say would move to. So currently f1 would be now at position character at the character at position i of word and then f2 the fing second finger will stay in the same place and then we will move to the next character and trying to place both fi trying to place both fingers and see which wh which one is bigger which one gets us by the the minimum distance i mean and for the choice 2 we we'll move finger 2 toward um, i so the distance there would be from the current position of finger 2 toward i and then we continue and now finger 1 is at the same place and finger 2 is now at position at toward i and then we go to the next character right and then we we just return the minimum of the two choices right of the two choices choice 1 and choice 2 so this is always good when you have a problem like this with dynamic programming that you want to write top-down um, solution for it. Think about all the choices at each given point. And here we have two fingers, and we want to find we want to place one of them at the word i, and we don't know which one is better. So we just try both, and we pick the minimum, right? Um, now, what is the um, what is the we we will need to find a way to calculate this distance. So the distance calculation here. Let's distance calculation so what the problem says is that we need the coordinates right so we need coordinates of like of the of the, of a character so we have the alphabet right so it's just the uppercase letters and each row if you look at the example each row has six character so to find a position of a specific character, let's just take all the uppercase letters, so A, B, C, D, E, F, all of them. And to find the row, just go through these with I starting from here, each one of them. And then the, the coordinate would be just I divided by 6, that would give us the row. And I modulo 6 will give us the position in the row. And that's all we need to do to find the coordinate. Okay, so... In order to find to not have to recalculate this every time, we can just have a key map or a keyboard map that keyboard that maps um, character to its coordinate. So we will do an initial processing so that each character we have the coordinates for it. And now the calculating the distance will be really easy. So we'll get we'll have a function that computes the distance. So between one position, let's say, um, let's just call it um, C1, and then for character C2. So first, for the initial positioning, right, when finger is at none, moving to the first, to the initial position, the cost is zero, right? And so we will need to handle that. So we say if, um, so here you could see in my distance, I always pass the finger position as the at the first one so if the first one is none then I can directly say that the cost is zero the distance is zero right so placing the first one is zero so and then the if both were if finger was at a position then at that point we we would need to calculate the distance from that position to that letter right so that would mean here that we need to use the calculation that the problem describes, which is just the absolute difference between the two coordinates, right? And so I will need to get the two coordinates. So let's say for the first character, for C1, 
um, x1 and y1 would be, since I have the keyboard that maps each character to the positions, I can just say keyboard. I will do this as a pre-processing step, by the way. And so this would be the keyboard for C1. And x2, y2 would be for keyboard for C2. And now the distance would be just returning the absolute difference for the x coordinates plus the absolute difference for the y coordinates. And now pretty much we are done. We know all the things that we need to do. So we know um, the base case and then we know the uh, choices we'll do at each point. So we know the body of the, so this here, that means that we know the body of the, um, of the helper function, right? And then at, we know how to calculate the distance and this is the pre-processing step that we will do uh, to have a map here. And then here we know how to calculate the distance, right? And so the only thing left to do is what is the initial call that will launch this helper um, so that we can get the result. And that's pretty much just returning. So we will start from the first position of the word. So we can just say helper word. The first position is zero. And the first finger starts out at no position at all, as we said. And the second one starts out as position now. And that's pretty much it. So now we have, we know the solution. Of course, if we do this call without memorization, we'll get time-limited exception, and so we will need to memorize. But um, let's first write it in terms of this, um, this logic here, and then we could add memorization. Um, so let's write this and see how if it passes on, um, on late code. Um, okay, so let's write this, um, the, what we just saw in the overview. So first thing is we need the functions that we said we have is calculating the distance from two uh, characters. And then we need the helper function here that has our state as a parameter. So it's the position in the word and then F1, the position of the first finger. If we don't pass it, it starts out as none or let's just leave it like that. And then the position of the second finger, which is F2 here. And then we need to do some pre-processing step, right? So that we can construct the map here and then the first the call that will launch helper function is starting from the first word from the first character of the word and then f1 starts out in no position and then the first finger starts out also in no position so now to get the alphabet um, so the alphabet that we are dealing with is just uppercase letters right and so what we'll do is just we will have our keyboard map here that maps a character to um to a coordinate and then we'll just go through the uh, uppercase letters, which just is, Python has this string thing that is, let's just, let me show you here. So Python has this string library, um, library and string ASCII uppercase gives us the, gives us the, all the uppercase letters. So we could just use that here um, and pass it here and import string. And from here, to get the coordinate of a, of a character, since we know each row has six columns, so keyboard position for coordinate for character C is just the position of I in that divided by six to, know, to get the row, and then modulo six to get the position in the row, right? The column position. And now that we have that, we can just call this function. And here, what is our base, base case? We said that our base case here is when we process the entire word. So if i is equal to the length of word, we can just return 0. And then we have the choices here. So the first choice is placing finger 1 at character i of word. And so that would be, um, we will need to calculate the distance for that. So it's moving the first finger from its current uh, position to warp character at position i and then after that then we will need to go to so f1 is now at position um, i plus one in word right so sorry so here um, i is the is the is the position in the world so we need to move to the next position so i plus one and 
F1 now moved to world I. So F1 is at world I. And F2 stayed where it is. So F2. The second choice is moving the second finger to the character position I. And that means that, well, we need to process now the next character in the word. So that would be I plus 1. F1 is still at the same position. F2 goes to word I. And we need to return the minimum of the two, right? So minimum of the two choices. And now we need to calculate the distance. So we'll, st we'll start out with F1 at none. And s the problem says the first, moving to the first character, the cost of that is zero. So we'll need to handle that. Then we can just return zero. Otherwise, so another thing, way we can write this is saying not, if not C1. That would mean it, uh, it's none, but let me just write it in a more clear way. Um, and then here, um, we'll get the coordinates for the first character, which is just getting what we uh, pre-processed here, so keyboard for C1, and for the coordinates of C2, it's X2, Y2, and then we'll use the formula given in the problem, which is the absolute difference between the X coordinates plus the absolute difference between the Y coordinates. Um, and that's pretty much it. So we have our base case, we have our both our choices, and we get the minimum. And here we start the, the process. Okay, so this should work. It would be, though, too expensive because it's, um, it repeats even things that we, we already tried. So it's of 2 to the power of n. And so to get it down to, um, to a smaller time complexity, we need to cache the what we already computed, so that next time we pass by the same state, we don't recompute, right? So to do that, let's define a map here for a cache, so to just memoize this. So Python has this where you can have even a, a tuple as the, um, as the, you could have like a, a pair of three, of three values as the key for a map. So here our state just depends on these three, right? So we could either concatenate them and make a string out of it, right? Or we could also just and make a string out of it and make that the key. Or we could also just, if we were in Java, that's what we would do. But otherwise, we could just use this as the key. Because that's the state. That defines a unique call to the method helper. And that's what we want. We want any call to helper that was done before. We don't want to redo it. We don't want to cache the result and just return that. So if this is in memo, then we can just return that. Um, so something like this. Um, and then here we need to cache the result. So the memo of this. So that next time we don't recompute it. So we cache that. And at the end we just return it. And so you can see here, if it's cached, we don't recompute it. We don't redo the calls here. We just return it right away. And that will get it down for us to just trying just all the choices possible. And so that would be limited by the number of letters here in the keyboard. Um, so let's submit this. OK, so that passes the test cases. Um, yeah. So we can also do this in like. Um, uh, bottom up dynamic programming, but um, yeah, this is pretty straightforward and easy. This is easier to understand, I think. Um, yeah, so that's all for this problem. Thanks for watching and see you next time.